are you fighting for? Jeffrey Shipman. On February the 10th, 1990, one of the greatest boxers of our times was defeated. His record was 48 and 0. He had never been defeated. 46 of those victories came by way of knockout. His name was Iron Mike Tyson. But on February the 10th, 1990, he went up against a gentleman the boxing world had never known. His name was Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas was from Cincinnati, Ohio. His mother was a licensed cosmetologist. And she told everyone in town, my son will beat Mike Tyson. My son will beat Mike Tyson. Everyone she encountered, my son will beat Mike Tyson. Unfortunately, Buster Douglas' mother passed away three days before the fight. Now Buster Douglas was at a crossroads in his life and they asked him, are you going to fight? Buster Douglas said yes. He went on to fight. Well, around the sixth round, Mike Tyson knocked Buster Douglas out, down, and the referee counted. One, two, three. In around the fourth count, I believe the referee whispered something to Buster Douglas that encouraged him. Four, who are you fighting for? Five, and around the sixth count, Buster Douglas jumped up, and he got himself together. In the eighth round, Buster Douglas knocked Mike Tyson out for the first time in his career. Buster Douglas went on to win that match, and they asked him, Buster, you are the world's heavyweight champion. You defeated Iron Mike Tyson. How did you do it? And he replied, I did it because I told my mother I would. And he said, when I was on that canvas, I was thinking to myself, I'm fighting for my mother. So I'll ask you, who are you fighting for? How many people in your life need to, need, need to see you succeed? Because your success is dependent, because their success is dependent on you. You give them encouragement. How many people in your life saying, I want you to win this contest. I want you to do the very best you can do. I want you to write that book you've always started to write. I want you to start that business that you've always wanted to start. Because if you can do it, I can do it. See, I know something about everyone in here, even not knowing you. I know you have greatness in you. I know you have potential in you that you have never tapped into. And I want to encourage you to let you know, don't let your situations determine your destiny. Because my situations told me that I wouldn't stand here today. You're looking at a gentleman who dropped out of school in the sixth grade. The sixth grade. No high school prom, no pet rally, no senior skip day, no homecoming games. The sixth grade. But there is a certain duality to me because you're also looking at a gentleman now who's in college getting his associate's degree in theology. And I plan to further my education on to a doctorate degree. I have a wife and six children. I know who I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for them. My life has to give my six children hope. They can't come to me and say, Daddy, it's hard to find a job with no college education. And I simply say, son, try finding a job with no high school education. My children can't make any excuses. My life. I intend on my life giving my children hope. There were some scientists once and they did an experiment. They took 10 mice and they put them in, in water and wanted to see how long they would survive. Well, in five hours they drowned. They did the same experiment three days in a row. On the fourth day, they determined that mice can last five hours in water before they drowned. Another scientist came along, he said, I'll challenge that theory. He took another set, he put them in water, and in the fourth hour, he pulled them out. The very next day, he took the exact same mouse, put them in the water again. Now today, they lasted eight hours. I'll ask you why. Because they had hope. You see, the day before, they was rescued on the fourth hour. 
And now they had something to hold on to when the storm came again. And sometimes you are the person that someone is holding on to. You give them hope. So you can't throw in the towel on the first round or the second round. Maybe you, you may get knocked out, but you have to realize who you're fighting for. There's people connected to you, and they need to see you make it because you are fighting for them. So I ask you, who are you fighting for? On December the 10th, 2001, I was on my way to work, a normal day. My daughter, who's here now, she called me. She said, Daddy, it's National Walk to School Day, and my mommy can't walk with me. Where are you? I had to ask myself a question. Where am I? I was on my way to a dead-end job. So I turned my vehicle around, and I walked my daughter to school that day. I stayed with her the entire day. I walked her to school. We had breakfast. We went through social studies, science, math, lunch, and recess. And on my way home, I determined that day that I'm fighting for my family. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm aware, and I quote, there will come a day when the hearts of men will wax cold and men will not stand up and fight for their dreams and men will not stand up and fight for their families and men will not stand up and fight for their goals. There will come a day. But I submit to you that today is not that day and we are not those men. So I'll ask you, whom are you fighting for? Mm -hmm. 